and uh, welcome to our worship this evening uh, for for Christmas Eve. I see uh, just some others are joining in right on the button, so it's good uh, it's good to have you here and to be sharing in this time together. Um, we're going to be celebrating communion in a few minutes, the Lord's Supper. So uh, you might not have grape juice on hand, but whatever you have that's kind of like grape juice, something, you grab it, get some. Uh, you might not have, I'm not even sure what proper communion bread is, but, but whatever you have, get some so that you can share in the Lord's Supper with us. Um, in our tradition, you're welcome. Everyone's welcome at the table. All you need is to know your need, to know that you need God and that Jesus is the one who can fill you with what you need most. That's all you need to bring is yourself as you are, needy as you are. I want to give some uh, some thanks to uh, to people who've helped with the service today. Um, first of all, you're going to hear some readings, and they're done by Laura Alessio and Phil Irish. Then, uh, oh, and the music. The music today has been pre-recorded for us by uh, Betty Weinstein. We're going to listen to a couple of pre-recorded uh, uh, or professional pieces. Uh, first is called Glory, and it's by, um, well, it's based, it's uh, written by Alana Lewandowski, who's uh, a Canadian uh, singer and songwriter, and performed by Steve Bell and some friends of his, who's also Canadian. So we'll be listening to that song, Glory, in a few moments. And then later in the service, we'll be listening to a song uh, which is uh, called Oh Holy Night. And you might know that. It's very well known. It was written originally in French by Placide Capot. It was translated into English by John White, Dwight. And the version we're going to play is uh, by Ben Kaplan. And he's a Canadian singer from Halifax. And he writes this in his notes about this song. He says... I didn't grow up listening to much Christmas music. Being Jewish, Christmas wasn't a big thing in my home. Um, not at all. That said, we all know it's pretty hard to ignore the Christmas season. Just like everyone else, I am constantly bombarded with Christmas cheer outside of the home. I have to admit, he writes, that I find a lot of that music a bit corny. Where is that minor, that minor fall, the major lift? He's quoting Leonard Cohen there. Where is the bafflement? Where are all the violins and clarinets? And so his version has a bit of a, a Jewish feel to it, uh, maybe a bit of a Leonard Cohen feel. And uh, it might speak to us particularly this Christmas. It's a, it's a minor fall sort of Christmas, I guess you could say. Uh, it feels to me like we're going through the Grinch story, but it's different. In, in the Grinch story, I, I'm not going to summarize it for you. I think you know it. But this character called the Grinch who just detests Christmas. He loots all the homes of the Who's down in Whoville to try to take Christmas away from them. It says he packed up their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags and the tinsel, the trimmings and trappings. But he realizes that he hasn't stopped Christmas not when he hears those who's down in Whoville singing together, gathered at the center of town. 
Well, it feels like we're being grinched, but backwards. We still have all the trimmings and trappings, but we're not able to get together, to gather at the center of town or in our church sanctuary. Last Christmas was, was the same, of course, except then uh, I felt, maybe you did, uh, some, some energy about trying something new and doing things differently. I, we were naive about what was to come. We were only finished wave one. We still had two, three, now four. Omicron was just a letter in the Greek alphabet for those who know the Greek alphabet. This Christmas, we've been through so much more. We're tired out. I'm tired out. We need rest for our spirit. Will you find rest with me this evening? Receive the rest that God gives. And gather around Jesus and receive him and enjoy him. Simply enjoy. I'm going to play, uh, we're going to hear a poem in a moment and then We'll sing a verse from the carol, still, still, still. And we'll start to hear the story of Jesus' arrival. A couple other snippets, too, from a letter written by an early Christian to a, someone named Titus. More of the story, another snippet from Titus, more singing of still, still, still. And then we'll hear Steve Bell sing glory. And from there, continue to worship, to rest, and to enjoy. Let's worship together. Out on Christmas Eve. The deep night torques its mudded darkness, and billions roil through tossed slumber, bodies sleeping while hardly resting, seized with fears without number. In halls where they toast the Caesar, servant and slave snuff dark the light, hiding refused breathing corpses of this long debauched night. A thief wisps from house to home, testing each for unlocked door. From inside an infant cries, fearing what they're looking for. And on hills forgotten, shepherds watch sheep.
In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everybody went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and the family line, he went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to David's town called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. The kindness and generosity of God, our Savior, has dawned upon the world. Nearby, shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's town. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great assembly of heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. And they said, glory to God in heaven and on earth peace among those on whom his favor rests. The grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing for all humankind. As you come in worship today, what do you bring with yourself? Offer these to God. What are you bringing to celebrate? Give thanks to God.
What are you bringing to grieve? Grieve with God. What are you bringing to confess? Share that burden with God. What hopes are you bringing? Tell God about them. What are you looking for? When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what they had been told about this child. And everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told. Just like any other night Counting sheep Just trying to stay upright Shuffling our feet We heard the beat Of an angel's wing An angel's wing And above We saw Oh 
left the fields moved by the angel's song even the sheep they seemed to sing along they ran like drunken poets looking for their muse to the beat of angels wings All at once, our hearts knew what to cry. Glory, 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 In that uh, that account of of Jesus' arrival and, and all that happened around his birth and and in many of the the, the carols we sing in, in that song we just heard, it just keeps coming up that that word glory, particularly with the shepherds, you know the angel of the Lord appeared to them in the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified the army of angels praised glory to god in the highest heaven and, and later after seeing for themselves all that they had been told was true the shepherds returned glorifying and praising god so i've been wondering what what does glory mean it's become one of those words that you know we just say especially in church things it it just flies by our ears and what what uh what is it what is it all about and and, and can meditating on god's glory help us to find rest with god The first thing I found was that that glory can mean something like like reputation. Uh, someone who comes out on top, someone who accomplishes something, has glory. Um, an athlete who wins a competition, uh, a commander who wins a battle, a scientist who wins a Nobel Prize, or uh, an actor who wins an Oscar. The cheers of the crowds, the recognition of your peers, the respect of, respect of your competition, that, that's glory. This idea of glory especially comes from the classical civilizations of, of Greece and Rome. Uh, the Greek word doxa means, it comes from the idea of seeing, and it's how you're seen, how, what's the common belief or opinion about you? And reputation meant everything. You strove to gain and to keep yours and that of your family. Of course, you know, we, we all realize that, that that kind of glory can be light. It can be fleeting. It can be empty. 
one, one slip or, or, or even a rumor and your reputation is damaged, destroyed maybe. The measure of who you are is more than the number of likes you get. If, if you get through the shell of celebrity, you find that underneath there's often a lot that's hollow. And if it's all about your reputation, can you ever rest? I mean, really rest with yourself as you really are. When it, when it comes to God's glory, though, it's, it's a whole different thing, a whole different order. God is, is the creator, so God's glory is seen in everything that God has made. God is the deliverer. God freed God's people Israel from slavery in Egypt, and, and God in Jesus delivered us from sin, bondage, and death's destruction. God is the upholder moment by moment, thought by thought, heartbeat by heartbeat. God keeps everything going. And God is love. So who has greater glory? Who deserves greater reputation than, than God? But can we rest in God's glory? I, I, can I, as, as who I am, rest knowing who God is? Can I rest with God? I, I said this idea of glory as reputation is classically Greek and, and Roman. It, it's certainly there in the Hebrew and Jewish traditions that, that are carried in our Bible. But, but there we find another sense of glory too, especially God's glory. The word used for God's glory in Hebrew literally means weight, as in heavy. You know, your reputation glory, it can be light, it can fly away easily. And it doesn't necessarily get to the heart of who we are, but, but this weight glory, it's, it's thick, it's full, it's, it's grounded, it's significant. You know, we, we talk about having a, a heavy conversation, <laughs> you know. And that means it was about something important, something that matters. Something that's weighty, doesn't blow away easily, it, it lasts. I, I'm not much of a mystic. I, I don't experience the presence of God very often, at least in a physical way. The handful of times I, I think I have, uh, when I think God was giving me a physical sensation uh, of God's spirit filling me, it, it felt weighty. Like, like I was being pressed, but not from outside, but rather inside. And, and for me, that, that was God's encouragement. It was God's assurance. I was... a a taste in God's glory. But, but I can't say it was restful. In fact, it, it felt sort of wonderfully uncomfortable. God's glory is absolute weight, perfectly heavy, wonderfully full, astonishingly significant and delightfully grounded all that's good, but can I rest in God's weighty glory? Can I rest with God? I've got some more to say, but first let's let's listen to the song I told you about earlier. It's O Holy Night. I think you know it, but this time it's being sung by Ben Kaplan. And again, I've added some some uh, some art to it as well.
was weighty his voice and the way he's arranged that song it had a heavy glory to it but but there's one more sense of glory light uh you saw that in in the paintings there um it, it's this idea that the glory of god spreads and infuses the, the space around it like like light does now, you know, God is everywhere, and so God's glory is everywhere. But, but it's like when, when God wants to manifest God's presence for us in a particular way or, or when people want to describe it and, 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 and paint it, they use light. Light is the language used 
you know, think of the, think of the carol, Silent Night, you know, all is calm, all is bright, though it is the middle of the night. And glories stream beams of light from heavens afar. And Son of God loves pure light and radiant beams from thy holy face. Light has the sense of, of, of purity, uh, that nothing's hidden and everything is energetic and, and beautiful. Light draws us toward it. We want to be in the light. We want to be covered with it. But light can also overpower us. If God's glory is like light, can we rest within it? Or would we be blinded, burned? Well, before I finish, let's sing together another carol, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. Maybe that's it. Infant holy, infant lowly. If glory is, is reputation, then how can someone like me or you find rest before God who is the almighty, the all good? If glory is weight, how can I find rest with God without being crushed? If glory is like light, how can I find rest beholding God without being blinded or burned? This is a sign for you. You shall find the babe, your savior, your God. Your glory. You shall find God glorious, wrapped snugly in infant clothes and lying where animals eat their supper. God, in all of God's glory, comes to you, to me. To all of us. What becomes of God's reputation then when it's, it's shepherds who are invited to the baby shower? 
Now, what becomes of God's weightiness then? This one who can be carried in a, in a human arm. What becomes of God's light then? This one who draws us closer. Who gives us sight. And by whom we see all things. Infant holy, infant lowly. God's glory. This Jesus. And so you can rest. You can rest with God. Sleep in heavenly peace. Peace glorious. Amen. We're coming to the Lord's table where we taste a bit of God's glory. Glory in, in bread. This is a bun from the Getty Street Market. Glory in grape juice. Or wine. Come and experience the glory of God. You are welcome at this table. Because Jesus has set it for you. With himself. In the prayer, we'll start with some words together and then... Um, as we pray, at times I'll say, we praise you, O God, and you can say with me, glory in the highest. And I'll put these words on the screen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and our praise with the angels of heaven and all the saints of the earth we praise you O god together glory in the highest you are the giver of life and light the lord most holy you create light out of darkness you craft the fullness of your creation you give life and fashion us in your image. We praise you, O God. Glory in the highest. When we turned from you in sin and rebellion, you did not turn from us. Your patience is persistent and your mercy without measure. You made us your people delivered us from captivity, promised to be our God, and called us back to you. We praise you, O God. Glory in the highest. You sent Jesus, God the Son, to be our Savior. In him your word, which dwelt with you for all eternity, became flesh and blood like us and moved in among us. He was full of grace and truth. And in Jesus, we see your glory. We praise you, O God, glory in the highest. Jesus, you were born in humility to rule over all creation. You were a helpless infant and the power of God's love. You were poor in worldly things 
to bring the wealth of God's grace. You were rejected by most, but welcome all who seek you. In your life, your death, your resurrection, you rescued us from sin's slavery and death's doom. You made a new relationship with us and formed us into your community of faith. We praise you, O oh God. You have bread? Please take it and follow after me. Jesus, on the night before you died, you took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and shared it with those at your table. You said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. You took the cup, blessed it, and shared it with those at your table. You said, this is the cup of the new covenant, the new relationship, which is sealed in my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, remember me. We praise you, O God. Glory in the highest. God in Christ, we celebrate your dying and your rising as we await the day of your return. And with thanksgiving, we offer ourselves to you to be by your grace a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon your gifts that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your spirit, make us one with him and with all who share together at your table. As you fill us now, send us from here to fill the world so that we may give you glory in all that we do speaking truth, serving justice, helping those in need, and living in love. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we praise you, O oh God. Glory in the highest. And we continue in prayer as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you. Take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you. Drink this and rejoice.
God, fill us. Heal us. Lift us. Break us. And as you are broken for the world, send us broken as healers. Oh God, use us to bless. In Christ we pray. Amen. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told it would. Wherever you go, God is already there, just as God has said. Together, God, help me notice, help us notice, and celebrate together. <laughs>